Way back in August of 1962, Marvel Comics published Amazing Fantasy 15, written by Stan Lee with art by Steve Ditko. This was the first appearance of Spider-Man in the Marvel Universe. And in the years and decades since that issue was released, Marvel Comics has continued to tell really excellent stories with Spider-Man. And this leads all the way up to the anniversary issue of Amazing Fantasy 1000, which we're going to be covering up on the channel today. Now, this is a massive 72-page uh, issue coming in at $7.99. And instead of talking about every single page in the comic book, I'm going to count down my top five favorite stories in Amazing Fantasy number 1000. My name is Arico Branock, and let's go ahead and dive right into the video. But before we do so, I wanted to encourage you to consider subscribing to the channel if, you, if it's your first time checking out our content. And since you're already here, why not go ahead and like this video as well. Next up, I wanted to show off the cover for the issue from our friends over at Adventures in Poor Taste. Here's a look at uh, some of the members of the creative team and the gorgeous cover in the issue from John Romita Jr. I wanted to start things off by talking about my honorary mention. Um, so I really like this Along Came a Rhino story that is like actually the, the story that closes out Amazing Fantasy 1000. And now let's dive right into some of my very favorite stories in The Amazing Fantasy 1000. So number five is the story, which is actually a sequel to the second part of Amazing Fantasy 15, the second story that writers and artists don't often talk about. So this story is written by Kurt Busiek, and it features art from Terry and Rachel Dodson. So it's such kind of a clever idea to have a sequel to the second story that not a lot of people often pay that much attention to. There's a really great sense of tone here, which I think is captured excellently from Terry Dodson, the artist of the issue. And I really like uh, j just the great sense of humor from Kurt Busiek throughout the issue. I don't think this story overstays its welcome, though some of the lore goes really kind of deep and, and, and intense. And I think this story can be a little bit difficult to follow at times, but such a great idea executed really well from both the writer and the artist. Our number four story is called You Get It. And this is written by Jonathan Hickman with art from Marco Cicchetto. For a lot of people, this is going to be the story that they're really looking forward to over in Amazing Fantasy 1000. And I really enjoyed the issue, but I think the reason why it didn't rank higher on my list is because I was honestly expecting writer Jonathan Hickman to bring more science fiction concepts to the issue. What we do have here is really fantastic. If you look over on the um, second kind of row of panels, you can see that Spider-Man is using the bridge that Jonathan Hickman first utilized for his landmark um, Fantastic Four run years and years ago with um, uh, Dale Eaglesham and some other creators. But getting Spider-Man seeing kind of like the different versions of himself and kind of like shouting out the Spider-Verse is really the reason why you would kind of, um, you know, pick up this story in the series. There's a great sort of camaraderie between the different Spider-Men of this comic book. And I really enjoyed the kind of science fiction stuff that pops up, you know, in the beginning and then towards the end of the title. I hope this is just a precursor and a teaser to what Jonathan Hickman does next on the series. But I think one of the things about this particular story that I didn't like as much was I thought there was too much, too much camaraderie. There was too much dialogue, which I'm very shocked to see because usually the issue that I have with Jonathan Hickman is there's too much plot and not enough character work. So hopefully that's the only reason why that is, is because of just kind of the nature of the anniversary issue. And I think that with, um, you know, a, a full Jonathan Hickman Spider-Man issue, this wouldn't be um, a, a problem at all. I really like kind of the the dark work from Marco Cicchetto. I love how, Mike, how, how Marco Cicchetto draws comics and how many details from him are on the page. 
um, his 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 page layouts and panels are really excellent. Take a look at this final panel up on this page. I just love how much drama is kind of being communicated through this side eye that Spider-Man is giving. I think it looks really profound here and that this is a really great um, kind of side story here, but it could have been better. And some of those elements are actually here in our next story which is called The Kids Got a Good Eye. So this is from Rainbow Rowell and Olivier Coipel. Now, this story is actually very traditional. Um, this story, it looks like it takes place early in Spider-Man's career because Peter Parker has a relationship with Betty Brant um, from the Daily Bugle newspaper, which was very early on in the comics. I really like the conversation that Peter um, you know, has with Betty and the rest of the cast here. And I just really appreciated how expressive uh, Olivier Coipel's work is as a whole. Uh, I've talked about Olivier Coipel here on the channel and some other videos, but he is one of my favorite artists. I, I love them so much on Thor with um, John Michael Straczynski, but I was just shocked to see how much more expression was in Peter Parker's face than I thought there would be, um, you know, with his work. We all know that Olivier Coipel can really kind of execute a, a page and make it look really incredible and, and really stoic and beautiful. But I think the next level or the evolution that I want to see of Coipel is more expressions. And I thought this issue delivered really well. Lastly, I should just um, take a moment and say that I loved the um, camaraderie in the dialogue with Rainbow Rowell. I think it's very, very good. And I would really like to see Rowell take on a full Spider-Man comic book. So our number two spot is In the Flesh from Hoche Anderson and Giuseppe Comancoli. This is a really dark story for an anniversary issue and really kind of bucked the trend that we've seen with some really sappy kind of Spider-Man stories. But I think what this does so well is basically take on a character who may have, you know, some kind of mental um, issues, but really does a great job kind of making you empathize with her and showing just how compassionate and bold Spider-Man can be. Um, this woman believes that there's um, spiders in her flesh and it's just kind of such a dark and creepy story. This is a great spot for Common Coley to come in and draw a story because Common Coley's pencil set is very specific and probably not the first artist you would think of when you think of the Spider-Man property, but using Common Coley in a horror context is absolutely one of the best ways to do so. And this is my number two story because I think it makes and really shows off just how much compassion Peter Parker has for each and every kind of individual and bystander as a whole. Our number one spot, oh, this story is just fantastic. This is called With Great Power. We have, our, we have writing from Neil Gaiman and art from Steve McNiven. This story is so cool. It kind of shows the personal relationship that writer Neil Gaiman has with Spider-Man. Uh, Neil Gaiman, he's he's written a few Spider-Man stories, but but really has but but the character really has such a profound influence on him as a person. And I think this issue does a good job kind of melding fiction with your own kind of personal reality. I love how blurry the lines get. And also, I can't help but notice that Steve McNiven takes a little bit of a different approach to his art for this story than what we typically see. Um, McNiven really, really does a great job getting the expressions of the characters so well and also drawing the movement from page to page. And this entire series does a really good job, even featuring like um, strong emotions from Spider-Man, like despite the fact that he's in the mask. I don't want to give away anything about this story, but the last thing I want to say is you really should watch the In Search of Steve Ditko documentary on YouTube before you read this story because it will help you understand kind of the meta nature of what Neil Gaiman is writing in this text. 
So overall, we have a really, really great anniversary issue. There's some really fantastic talent here from prose writers like Rainbow Rowell. And man, I mean, Neil Gaiman is, I think, one of the biggest creators in comics with the Sandman on Netflix currently being so incredibly popular. So, yeah, this is a really great anniversary issue, um, you know, for Spider-Man. And I think does a really good job celebrating all the things that make the character unique and just showing how he's such a compassionate, um, you know, superhero and person as a whole. Did you like Amazing Fantasy 1000 as much as I did? What do you want me to go ahead and cover next? Let me know in the comments below and I will be back later this week with more excellent video content. I'll see you guys real soon. Bye.